Now you get a line and I'll get a pull, honey. You get a line and I'll get a pull, baby. You get a line and I'll get a pull. We'll all go down to the car that hole, honey. Baby, mine. Now what you gonna do when the creek runs dry, honey? What you gonna do when the creek runs dry, baby? What you gonna do when the creek runs dry? Gonna sit on the banks of the river and cry, honey. Baby, mine. Sell your crawl at C4 Dime, honey. Sell your crawl at C4 Dime, baby. Sell your crawl at C4 Dime. You sell yours, I'll sell mine, honey. Baby, mine. Now there's bread and milk upon the shelf, honey. Bread and milk upon the shelf, baby. Bread and milk upon the shelf. If you want any more, go sing it yourself, honey. Baby, mine. One time, Leopard was walking down a jungle path. He was so hungry. He could feel his ribs rubbing up against his stomach. He hadn't eaten in three days. There had been a drought, and all the big animals had stayed near the watering hole, and he couldn't lure them away. All the little animals had gone to the tops of the trees to catch a breeze, and they wouldn't come down. And Leopard was hungry. And when Leopard was hungry, he grew careless. And as he walked down that jungle path, he looked up to see if he could spy a nice fat monkey, a nice juicy squirrel. He never saw the trap in front of him, a deep pit dug by the hunters. He stepped on that grass mat and he fell to the bottom. He took his big claws and he tried to climb out, but it was too steep. He took his powerful legs and he tried to jump out, but it was too deep. And Leopard sat at the bottom of the pit, waiting for the hunters to come back. And when they did, he knew they'd kill him. And as he waited, he looked up. And there, looking over the top of the pit, was his little head. And Leopard said, Squirrel, Squirrel, it's so good to see you. Oh, Squirrel, please help me out of the pit. And Squirrel looked down and said, Ha, 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 no. Leopard said, What do you mean, no? When the hunters come back, they'll kill me. And Squirrel said, Ha, 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 good. One less leopard in the world sounds really good to me. Leopard thought quickly and he said, Squirrel, if you help me, I'll be your friend. I'll protect you from all the other animals. I won't hunt you ever again, Squirrel. Hmm. Squirrel thought about this and this sounded good to him. He thought, Leopard is strong and big. No one will ever tease me again if Leopard's my friend. So a squirrel climbed the tree next to the pit, walked down on a branch that went over that pit, and as he did, it bent deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper till Leopard could reach up and <laughs> grab the end, and he pulled himself out. The two of them sat there at the edge of the pit, and Leopard looked down and said, Squirrel, you've saved my life, thank you. <laughs> squirrel looked up and said, Ooh, it's good to have a big friend like you. And then Leopard remembered why he fell in the pit. He remembered how hungry he was. He remembered how he hadn't eaten in so many days. And he looked at that nice, fat, juicy squirrel. And Leopard <laughs> grabbed him. He said, Squirrel, I have to eat you now. Eat me? What do you mean eat me? I just saved your life. I know, Squirrel, but you know the law of the jungle. The strong survive and the weak perish. I'm very strong, and you're very weak. So I have to eat you, because I'm hungry. And Squirrel said, this isn't fair. I just saved your life, so you'd be my friend, and now you're going to eat me. Just then, around the bend in the jungle path, came Old Man Goat. Now, Old Man Goat was the wisest animal in the whole jungle. You could tell because he had a beard that was turning white. He had big shoulders and long horns, and even Leopard was just a little bit afraid. Goat walked up to the two of them and said, What are you two screaming about? Squirrel said, Leopard's going to eat me. Goat said, What else is new? You don't understand. I saved his life, and he promised to be my friend. What's that, said Goat? Squirrel told Goat the story. At the end, Leopard looked very uncomfortable, and he said, Well, it's true, Goat, but you know the law of the jungle. The strong survive and the weak perish. 
You can see that I'm very strong and Squirrel is very weak. Hmm. Goat didn't like what was happening and he didn't like the way Leopard was treating Squirrel. So he had a plan. He started to laugh. Ha ha ha! This is a very good joke you're playing on me, but you don't have to continue it anymore. Joke? What joke? Well, this joke that Squirrel saved Leopard's life. You don't really expect me to believe that now, do you? Well, it's true, the two of them said. Oh, come now, I'm not a fool. I can see that this little tiny animal could never save the life of this big, huge cat. The two of them said, it is true, we swear. Goat looked at them and said, if it's true, prove it. Show me. Do it again. So, Leopard let go of the squirrel. And Leopard turned and jumped to the bottom of the pit. Squirrel climbed up to the top of the tree. Goat walked over to the tree and he looked up and he said, Squirrel, let's not make the same mistake twice. You come with me, leave Leopard where he belongs. And that's what they did. And we all know what happened when the hunters returned. Now I had a dog and his name was Blue. I had a dog, his name was Blue. I had a dog and his name was Blue. I bet you five dollars he's a good dog too. Singing Yah, they're blue. You're such a good dog, you. Now old Blue's feet were big and round. Old Blue's feet were big and round. Old Blue's feet were big and round. They never allowed a possum to touch the ground. Singing Yah, they're blue. You're such a good dog. Now I've got a couple dogs at home. I've got Traveler and Dido, and they're good dogs, good hunting dogs, known all over the Midwest because of their incredible intelligence. In fact, all you have to do is show these dogs what rifle you're going to use, what gun you're going to use to go hunting, and they'll scare up that animal. For example, if you take your shotgun down off the rack and show it to them, they'll scare up a grouse for you. Take your 22, they'll get you a rabbit. Take your 30 out six, and it's a deer. These dogs are so smart, they never make a mistake. One day, I decided I was going to see how smart they really were. I put a fishing pole on the gun rack, called the dogs in the room, took that fishing pole off the gun rack, and showed it to them. Two dogs looked up, kind of smiled at each other, and they ran out the back door. I followed them, and they were behind the barn, digging for worms. Now old Blue died, he died so hard, he shook the ground in my backyard. We dug his grave with a silver spade and lowered him down with a golden chain. Now every time I hear Blue bark, every time I hear Blue bark, every time I hear Blue bark, I know we treat a possum and Noah's Ark. Singing, yah, they're blue. You're such a good dog, you. Once, a long time ago, Jack got up early in the morning and decided to make breakfast for the whole family. He walked into the kitchen, he opened up the cupboard. No food left. Now Jack had a big family. He had 11 brothers and sisters. His ma and pa were both sick. They'd had the flu for weeks. Hmm, no food, no money. Jack sat at the kitchen table and started thinking. He was the oldest kid, so he decided he'd go to town and get a job just for the day. And at the end of the day, he'd take his money, buy a big bag of groceries, come home and make a fine supper for everyone. He wrote his folks a note, put on his hat, his coat, grabbed his favorite book of folk tales, and he walked on out the door. Now Jack and his family lived way back in the hills, way back in the mountains. Deep forest all around. Now there's certain things you shouldn't do when you're walking through a forest, and one of them is read a book. There's lots of times you shouldn't read books. Shouldn't read books when you're driving a car, performing brain surgery taking a shower. But Jack, he opened up that book and he started reading. He looked up from his story and he was lost. He'd walked right off the path into the deepest part of the forest. And the more he tried to find his way back, the more lost he got. And pretty soon it started to get dark. And Jack knew he was going to have to spend the night out there. 
He found one of those big pine trees, you know the kind where the branches hang right down to the ground? He climbed underneath there, spent the whole night. Next morning he got up and it was cold. He's rubbing his hands and his face and his arms, trying to get the circulation going. He figured if he walked in one direction, sooner or later, he'd run into something, a farm, a road, something. He started walking, it started to drizzle. He started walking, it started to sleet. He started walking, it started to snow, and poor Jack was so cold, he could feel his clothes freezing to his skin. He knew if he didn't find a place to spend the night, he could freeze to death out there. And then suddenly he saw a light way in the distance. Where there's light, there's people. He walked towards that light, there was an old logging road, all abandoned, grown over with weeds, and a big old empty hotel. The whole building leaned to one side. He walked up those broken steps. He knocked at the door. Old man opened the door. He was so old, his wrinkles had wrinkles. He looked at Jack and said, what do you want, boy? Jack said, am I glad to see you? I'm real cold and real hungry. I need a nice warm spot to spend the night. I don't have any money. Old man looked at him and said, no money, no place to stay. Slammed the door in Jack's face. Well, Jack thought about it. Maybe I shouldn't have told him about the no money part. He knocked again. The old man opened the door and said, now what do you want, boy? He said, please, mister, just give me a little bowl of food. Let me sleep by the fireplace. I'll work for it. I'll scrub the floors. I'll do the dishes. I'll make the beds. The old man smiled a wicked smile and said, don't need no help boy. Jack said, what am I going to do? I'm going to die out here in the cold. The old man got a wicked grin and said, go up on the hill. Stay in the big house. Well, Jack turned around and looked up on the hill, and there was the biggest house he'd ever seen. Must have been 50 or 60 rooms. They'll let me spend the night up there. Sure will, said the old man. No one's ever stayed up there by themselves at night. In fact, the king says, if you can spend one night alone in that house, it's yours for free. For free, said Jack. That's great. I got a big family, 11 brothers and sisters, mom, pa, are both real sick. We could do it with a nice big house like that. I kind of like the way the window's kind of shaded by those pine trees. It's a really pretty house. I really like all those, all those chimneys. Oh, it's a great looking house. What's wrong with it? The old man smiled and said, some folks say it's haunted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> haunted? You scared of ghosts? No, no. Good. I'll send word to the king. You'll spend the night there. And just to show you what a nice guy I am, I'll give you some food. And he came back with a big bowl of ham and beans, big thick piece of cornbread covered with sweet butter, and said, here, boy, take this. Oh, Jack thanked the man for the food. But as he turned to go, he said, oh, by the way, mister, has anybody else ever tried to spend the night up there? Lots of people. Yeah? What happened to him? You might say they lost their heads over the place. Jack wasn't quite sure what the man meant, but he walked up that path. He stood in front of that big front door, and Jack knocked. He waited, and he waited, and he waited, and then he said, Why am I knocking if nobody lives here? He tried the door. It was unlocked. He pushed it open. He walked down that long, dark hall. Something ran over his foot. It was a rat as big as a cat. Something flew over his head. It was a bat as big as an eagle. And then he looked up at the ceiling, and coming down from the ceiling were spiders as big as my hand. Jack took one look at those spiders and said, that's it, I'm out of here. He ran for the front door. but. He remembered his hungry brothers and sisters, his poor sick parents, and Jack said, I got to win this house for him. He had an idea. It's a big house. Maybe he could just hide in one room and the ghost wouldn't find him. So he ran out to the woodshed. He brought in four big armloads of wood, started a big fire in that huge fireplace. He closed all the shutters to the window, locked the windows, piled furniture in front of him, found an old key in the kitchen, a skeleton key. He locked every door to the living room, piled furniture in front of the doors. He took a big sofa, pushed it up close to that fireplace, took off his wet boots and his wet jacket, put his food up there so it got nice and hot, bubbly hot, and that sweet butter would melt. Jack's warm in his hands saying, ha, 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 tomorrow this will be my house. And then he heard it, a voice. 
coming from inside the chimney. And the voice said, I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall. I'm going to Come on down, said Jack. Boom, boom. Two legs fell in the fireplace. They got up, walked over, and sat down next to Jack. They had on boots and pants. Jack looked at those two legs and he said, You better be careful, buddy. You almost spilled my ham and beans. He went back to that fire. He's warming his hands again and he hears that voice. I'm going to fall. I'm going to Climb down. Boom. Body falls in the fireplace, rolls across the floor, <laughs> jumps up and attaches itself to the two legs. Body's got on a shirt and a tie. Jack looks at that body and says, now listen here, buddy. You almost got ashes all over my cornbread. You better be careful. Well, Jack's getting a little nervous now. He's kind of scared. Maybe it was a bad idea locking himself in that room and barricading all the doors and windows with furniture. He's warming his hands one more time. I'm going to come on down. Boom, boom. Two arms fall in the fireplace. They grab each other like this. And they walk across the floor. They jump up to the two shoulders. Jack looks over at that ghost, and the ghost folds his arms, crosses his legs, looks at Jack. Well, Jack thought he was looking at him. He couldn't really tell because the ghost didn't have a head. Jack said, you stay right here, warm your hands and feet by the fire. I'm going to take my food and go eat in the closet. Well, Jack picked up his food, but before he moved two steps, the ghost jumped up, ripped the sofa in half, shook out the stuffing, and threw it across the room. He started pulling books off the cases, threw rolling furniture in every direction. Jack said, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you looking for? And a voice comes out of nowhere, and the voice says, Jack, I'm looking for my head. Where was it last time you saw it? Seven years ago tonight, Jack, robbers came in this house, and while I was sleeping, they cut off my head. They were looking for my treasure of gold and diamonds, but they never found it. But somewhere in this house, Jack, they hid my head, and I can't go to my eternal reward till I find it. I have to haunt this house every night. Till someone helps me, could you help me find my head, Jack? If you do, I'll tell you where my treasure is. You'll be the richest man in the kingdom, richer than the king. Rich, said Jack. That's great. I got a big family. Eleven brothers and sisters. Mom and Pa have both, both been real sick. We could do with a nice treasure of gold and diamonds. That'll be great with a big house and lots of treasure. What if we don't find your head? Well, if we don't find my head, I'd try yours on for size. Mm. Sounds fair to me. Where haven't you looked? And the ghost walked over. He opened up the basement door, and he pointed down those dark, dismal, dreary, damp basement steps. I haven't looked down there yet. It's dark down there. There aren't any lights in the basement. Not to worry, Jack. I'll give you a special candle. It won't go out. And the ghost walked over to the fireplace. He took his index finger, <coughs> pulled it off, lit it in the fire, and said, here, use this. Thank you. He took that gruesome, ghostly, ghastly candle. He walked down those dark, dismal, dreary, damp steps. He searched for one hour, for two hours, for three hours. And then, in a pile of rubbish, he found it. Felt like a bowling ball with ears. He picked up the head, put it behind his back, took that finger. Oh. He walked up those steps, and the ghost was waiting. And Jack said, here. And the ghost took that head and... <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jack. That feels wonderful. Took the finger. <laughs> now, Jack, because you helped me, I'll never haunt this house again. And I'll tell you now, the second step from the bottom is loose. Pry it open, dig down five inches, and you will find a treasure that will make you the wealthiest man in the kingdom. And with that, he disappeared. Well, Jack walked over and he looked down those dark, dismal, dreary, damp steps. And he said, I'm going down for that treasure <laughs> first thing in the morning. And he ate his food and he read some stories and he fell asleep on the sofa. Next morning he heard a knock at the door. He opened it. It was the king himself with his soldiers. They had shovels. They were ready to bury what was left of old Jack. But when he saw Jack was still alive, the king said, 
You are the bravest man in this kingdom. This house, all the land around it, and everything in it is yours. And Jack ran down and he dug up the treasure. He sent for his family. And they live like kings and queens the rest of their lives. And that's the story of Jack and the haunted house. Now Froggy went to court and he did ride. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Had a sword and a pistol by his side. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Kai mo ki mo kai mo ki way down yonder in a hollow tree. Owl and a bat and a bumblebee sing. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. He placed Miss Mousy on his knee. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Said Mousy, won't you marry me? King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Kai mo ki mo kai mo ki way down yonder in a hollow tree. Owl and a bat and a bumblebee sing. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Without my uncle Rat's consent, King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. I would not marry the president. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Kai mo ki mo kai mo ki way down yonder in a hollow tree. Owl and a bat and a bumblebee sing. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Uncle Rat, he laughed and shook his sides. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. To think his niece might be a bride. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Kai mo ki mo kai mo ki way down yonder in a hollow tree. Owl and a bat and a bumblebee sing. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Now what will the wedding supper be? King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. A fried mosquito and a roasted flea. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Kai mo ki mo kai mo ki way down yonder in a hollow tree. Owl and a bat and a bumblebee sing. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. First to come in was a bumblebee. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. She had a banjo on her knee. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Kai mo ki mo kai mo ki way down yonder in a hollow tree. Owl and a bat and a bumblebee sing. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Now the next to come in was a big gray goose. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Pick up the fiddle and she really cut loose. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Kai mo ki mo kai mo ki way down yonder in a hollow tree. Owl and a bat and a bumblebee sing. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Now the next to come in was a big black snake. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. He ate up half of the wedding cake. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Kai mo ki mo kai mo ki way down yonder in a hollow tree. Owl and a bat and a bumblebee sing. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Now the next to come in was that old time cat. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. He ate Miss Mousy and Uncle Rat. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Kai mo ki mo kai mo ki way down yonder in a hollow tree. Owl and a bat and a bumblebee sing. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. So that's the end of him and her. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. You won't see no tadpoles covered in fur. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Kai mo ki mo kai mo ki way down yonder in a hollow tree. Owl and a bat and a bumblebee sing. King Kong, kitchi kitchi kai me yo. Once there were two children named Jake and Esmeralda. One day they went for a walk in the woods. When they grew tired, they rested underneath a big oak tree. Jake turned to Esmeralda and said, Es, let's build a trap. Catch an animal, take it home as a pet. Good idea, said Esmeralda, but the only kind of trap I know how to build is for a large mouth frog. We'll need 10 sticks. They went into the woods and came back with five each. Now the directions were, you weave four sticks together, you tie them down with two, you make the springs with the other four, and you leave that trap in the middle of the road. Next day, the trap was sprung. And when the two kids opened it, out came a large mouth frog. He looked at Esmeralda and said, hello, who are you? What do you eat? Esmeralda said, well, I'm a girl. I eat lasagna and pizza and french fries. And the frog said, wow, fascinating. He looked at Jake and said, hello, who are you? What do you eat? Well, I'm Jake. I'm a boy, and I eat hot dogs, hamburgers, and broccoli quiche. And the frog said, wow, fascinating. Well, the two kids talked it over, and they realized it's not a good idea to take a wild animal and turn it into a pet. So they decided to let the frog go. 
As he hopped away, Jake said, hey, Froggy, if you're curious about what we eat, why not take a trip around the world, meet all the different animals, and see what they eat? The frog said, good idea. The first animal he met had two heads, one here, one down here. He looked at that weird animal and he said, hello, who are you? What do you eat? The head up here said, I'm a kangaroo. The head down here said, me too. We eat leaves and grass, and the frog said, wow, fascinating. Then he met an animal that moved very slowly. He looked at that animal and he said, hello, who are you? What do you eat? The animal said, I'm a turtle. And back in my shell, in my kitchen, I've got a microwave. And I'm into frozen pizza. And the frog said, wow, fascinating. Then he met an animal that looked just like a horse but had stripes. He looked at this strange animal and he said, hello. Who are you? What do you eat? And the animal said, I'm a zebra, and when I'm not refereeing basketball games, I eat hay and oats. The frog said, wow, fascinating. Well, then the frog fell asleep in a clearing. <laughs> when he woke up, it was dark, and the frog got very, very scared. And then a long green animal slowly slunk and slithered silently, stealthily, secretly into the clearing. The frog looked down and the frog said, Hello, who are you? What do you eat? And the animal said, I'm a snake and I eat large mouth frogs. Have you seen any around here lately? The frog looked down at the snake, and the frog said, No, I've never seen a large mouth frog in my whole life. And he hopped away, and he lived happily ever after. And the moral to that story is, there's a time and a place to keep your big mouth shut. Hi, I'm going to show you how to play the spoons, because this is an instrument you all have at home. Just go into the drawer, get two metal teaspoons, and I'll show you how to do it. You put your thumb on top, hold that first spoon with two fingers underneath it, just like that. Grab the other spoon upside down with the other two fingers. Now you see there's not a lot of space in between there, just enough for one finger. Hold them nice and tight, then you hit your leg. All of a sudden you got music. Put your hand over it and bounce it from your leg to your hand. You can go fast, you can go slow, you can do tricks, slow motion. Now you notice I put tape on my metal spoons, it helps you to hold them better, kind of cushions it. Just grab those spoons, remember thumb on top, two fingers in between, grab the other spoon with the other two fingers, and just go ahead and make some music. Now I'm going to teach you how to make the large mouth frog. He's really wonderful because you can talk to him all the time. And if your teacher catches you talking in class, you can always say, I was talking to my frog. You need two hands. You cross your little finger and your ring finger, like that. Then you put your middle finger over your ring finger. Then you take your index finger, your pointers, put it underneath that third finger, put them together, and bring your thumbs together, and there he is. Saw a mouse chase a cat, fooba wooba, fooba wooba. Saw a mouse chase a cat, fooba wooba, John. I saw a mouse chase a cat, I saw a cheese eat a rat. You sleep too long now, fooba wooba, John.